Shalom, people. It's no question that the old is being made new again. We're seeing old events that happened in the past being repackaged and coming about here in the future. But it's kind of difficult sometimes to identify them. And if you can't identify them, they'll seem like completely new occurrences to you. But if you can identify them, you'll gain a better understanding of what is happening. The old ways are coming back. These ways will overtake all of humanity eventually. The mindsets that were dominant during our ancestors' times will return. Some have labeled this return to prominence of these old ways as a return to the dark ages. You know, a, turn, a return to times when religious persecution was the norm. People were killed for worshiping this idol or that idol. They're made up gods practicing these foul practices. See, the reason why we haven't had any death trials for people that have practiced Things like witchcraft and stuff like that is because the, the widespread practice of witchcraft had been pretty much wiped out, except for amongst the elites. Oh, yeah, they kept the practice alive and they reaped the benefits from it. But the widespread practice amongst the general population was all but suppressed and wiped out. So as a result, people views of witchcraft have also become tame. Um, somewhat uh, sanitized. See, back in the day when it was widespread, people knew pretty much all the things that went into it. They knew the child sacrificing that was part of it. They knew all the gory details back in the past because it was so widespread. Now, you know, since it's been suppressed, it was also able to be cleaned up in the minds of the masses. That's why you got this notion of these modern day witches that look at what they do as being good you know you know they look at the concepts of witches being evil and and things like that as being some kind of misconception you know either those particular modern day witches have not delved deep enough into their craft to see just how nasty it can get or they're simply lying. But other things too that come about, events that happened in the past that happen again now, but have a modern twist to it. I was thinking about the concept of race wars, you know, and that's on the, that's on a lot of folks' minds, you know. You got the racist white people that want race wars because, quite frankly, they think they can win it. That's the only reason why they want one. You know, nobody wants a war that they perceive themselves of losing. You know, those are the people that are always trying to talk down the idea of war. Trying to say, let cooler heads prevail. But when you think 
you have the advantage. When you think that the only thing that's keeping you from taking control of everything are the laws in place to the land and you want to see a downfall of, of civilization so that you can get the race war going and, and, and take your rightful place on top of the mountain. If that is your mindset, then yes, you will clamor for a race war. But is that not the very epitome of arrogance? <laughs> I was thinking about the story of David and Goliath. And how that could very well parallel the concept of a race war, particularly between us and white people. You know, yes, they far outnumber us. Yes, they have more weapons than us. Yes, they train on average a lot more with those weapons than we do. Thus, they are more proficient with those weapons. They're more, on average, more custom and aware of how those weapons work and how to maximize their potential. They are the embodiment of the Goliath, the insurmountable opponent, the unbeatable champion, you know? And then when you look at us, our numbers are far less. Most of us that do have guns don't half even know how to use them, you know? And we have this delusion that one gun is <laughs> tantamount to every gun on the planet. You know, you see these cat, these particularly these young cats, they get their hand on a little nine millimeter and they think they unstoppable you know of course they go out and, and find out how wrong they were but a lot of us even if we don't have criminal ambitions we think we'll get like one weapon and that's it we think that's the end all be all to having a weapon you know so we don't have the proficiency we don't have the understanding and vast majority of us don't have any kind of training whatsoever. You know, it was said of Goliath that Goliath was a man of war. He was born and raised to fight. While David, David was a goat herder. He tended to sheep, you know, He'd never harmed a man before in his life up until the day that he met Goliath. So was an obvious mismatch. <laughs> it was an obvious uh, no brainer that Goliath would just basically step on David <laughs> and kick him to the side and say next. But as we know happened through the most high, David gained the power and skill to best the man of war, Goliath, with a single stone. That stone hit him so hard that it embedded itself into his skull. Now that was a hard ass thrown stone, slung stone. So what this tells us and what scripture also tells us is that man does not live by bread alone. Man does not live by his concepts of proficient, proficiency, training, resources, food. 
we live by the word of Yah. So when Yah says, you win, it doesn't matter what your enemy has done. It doesn't matter how much training your enemy has endured. It doesn't matter how proficient your enemy is with his or her weapons. It doesn't matter what your enemy knows. It doesn't matter how many push-ups your enemies can do. It doesn't matter how many sit-ups they can do. It doesn't matter how many miles they can run. When, the, when Yah says, you win and they lose. That's what's happened. That is what will happen. And there's nothing either of, either of us, any of us can do about that. So when it comes to the concept of a race war, if I was a white person, I personally wouldn't be so confident about myself. I wouldn't be one of those people that clamor for such events to happen because scripture shows on many times against the odds scenario where people look like there is no possible way that they can win. Most High loves those scenarios. He loves the underdog. Because through those scenarios, he can make himself known to everybody. How can a ragtag nation of people that only make up around 13% of the population overtake in combat 70% of the population that have the training and know-how and have conquered all these other nations with their weapons of war, machines of war. How in the world can that happen without some kind of divine intervention? It's the perfect scenario. It doesn't get any better than that. The Bible shows it time and time again. There was another incident in the Bible. I can't really cite it directly, but I do remember where the Most High purposely reduced the number of the men that he wanted to go fight, the Israelite men that he wanted to go fight against an enemy because he wanted to put himself on display yet again. It was that it was a incident where he told uh, the Israelite men to go down to the river, I believe, and uh, those of them that drank from the cup of their hand, you know, they put water in the cups of their hands and drank the water they were to be left behind with the men that kneeled down and drank from the water by putting their lips to the water the stream itself those were the men that would be going to war and I think at the end of the day it was only like 300 men that actually went and they were going against some nation that was many 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 times larger than them and more powerful than them and most high put his glory on display and they overtook him so the old be made new again the old times old ways and old events playing out again this quite frankly could be a manifestation of just that because we're in the perfect position outmanned outgunned 
we're in the perfect position for the Most High to show the world who is God. Shalom.